All right, so in this chlorine video, I'm actually going to show you some more reactions with chlorine, really cool reactions with chlorine uh, than I did in my previous chlorine video. And I'm gonna, of course, talk to you a little bit about chlorine. So chlorine is a halogen, and it is the second lightest halogen, which also means it's the second most reactive halogen. Now, fluorine, the element above it, is the most reactive element, pretty much, and you can't actually chemically isolate it. Well, you can, but it's really hard. So I wasn't able to show you elemental fluorine, but I am going to be able to show you plenty of elemental chlorine. So uh, the, probably the most familiar place you see chlorine compounds is in salt, which is sodium chloride. Now both sodium and chlorine are extremely reactive but when you put them together, they lose all that energy in the form of heat and light, and you end up with a pretty stable compound. Uh, I'm actually gonna be making salt the hard way in this, later in this video. Another application for chlorine is in making uh, various plastics. Many times plastics, such as PVC, which stands for polyvinyl chloride, are actually polymerized chlorohydrocarbons. So what you can do is because both hydrogen and chlorine can accept an electron to fill their valence, although chlorine much more readily, I mean, chlorine really wants to, to accept an electron a lot more than hydrogen, you can take a hydrocarbon such as, say, methane, and replace some of the hydrogens with chlorine. Um, if you take a polymerized hydrocarbon with lots and lots of really long chain and replace it with chlorine, then depending how you do it and in what configuration, you'll get different plastics. Some plastics aren't chlorinated, but many are. The ones that are chlorinated generally are much more corrosion resistant because if you have the chlorine in there, it's really hard to replace it with something else. Uh, fluorinated hydrocarbons are even less reactive, and um, Teflon is a fluorinated, uh, fluorinated polymerized carbon chain. Um, chlorine itself, elemental chlorine, was used in World War I as a poison gas because it both is a poison gas and it's heavier than air, so it can sink into trenches. Um, and the way you die from it is actually um, from the chlorine reacting with water uh, mucous membranes in, in your nasal pathway and lungs to form hydrochloric acid, which um, then kind of builds up and your lungs will create this fluid to try to, get, to dilute it and get rid of it, and eventually you end up drowning in your own fluid. So it's pretty grisly death. Um, and, and anyway, sometimes the wind blew in the wrong direction, and the people who were letting out this chlorine gas got it swept back into their own trench. So it, didn't, it wasn't very effective. Um, so, okay, I think it's time to show you some chlorine in action. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make salt the hard way by mixing chlorine and sodium. I'm going to show you decomposition and chlorination of acetylene gas, or ethyne gas, which is two carbons triple bonded with two hydrogens, by just injecting it with a syringe directly into a beaker full of chlorine gas. Mostly it's decomposition. And I'm going to also show you uh, burning chlorine dioxide. Um, it's, it's not actually burning, it's decomposition of chlorine dioxide into chlorine and oxygen. All right, here goes. Okay, here is my uh, chlorine gas generation setup. I have a syringe full of muriatic acid, which is right over there. It's technical grade hydrochloric acid I got at the hardware store. Uh, this Erlenmeyer flask, my gas generation flask, full of some bleach. I've got Clorox bleach in there. And then I've got an inverted Erlenmeyer flask full of water with a tube going in there to get to catch the chlorine gas. I'll mix these, cap this very quickly, and let the uh, chlorine gas bubble in. Um, one more thing I should tell you. I'm actually going to, I'm going to film me doing it. 
and you will see that I actually don't put in, I don't cover this immediately because I don't want air to get into the flask. I want it all to be chlorine. So I'm going to now add a little bit and you see there's some bubbling and now I'm going to cover this up. And now the bubbles are mostly chlorine gas. I'm doing a second go because the first time I made the chlorine, it I thought it was too dilute. There was too much air in there, basically. So I'm I'm having another go, where more of more of the gas in there is actually pure chlorine gas. We'll see how that goes. All right, here is the flask with chlorine gas, and you can see it's a nice pale green, which, um, and I've seen pictures of what are supposed to be pure chlorine gas, so this looks pretty darn pure um, and pretty concentrated. And um, I put a piece of sodium metal in there to make uh, table salt, basically the hard way. And at, uh, at first nothing much happens. Um, you can see some smoke in there, which is actually particulate table salt, particulate sodium chloride. But at first, nothing much happens, so I have to add a little bit more water for the reaction to really get going. And you can see I'm really excited about it happening. All right, the so reaction starts chlorine. picking up, and as you can see, I'm Heck quite yeah. excited about it because I've been wanting to do this reaction for a long time. And um, then you will hear a little sound. <laughs> That is right so now, awesome. that's glass breaking. Um, and there's the product, some salt with the broken glass. There's the table salt. And then I'm going to inject acetylene. 